Hey there, YouTubers. It's Don from True Cable coming back at you again. Uh, this time, we're going to talk about uh, not so much how to terminate something or how specifically to like wire something up, but we're going to talk more about LAN setup and how it looks. Um, this is going to kind of maybe bring some things together. Uh, we've done a lot of videos about how to, but we haven't really talked about the entire network yet. So that's what I want to do today. So uh, with that, uh, let's go ahead and uh, start looking at how these connections are made up. So everything starts with, first of all, you need to know you've got good power. Uh, you want a grounded three-prong outlet, uh, and you need to make certain that the outlet is wired properly. Uh, because the equipment is going to, you know, if you're going to be running shielded cable especially, uh, and the equipment requires three-prong grounding, uh, but you need a way to drain off any sort of electrostatic discharge from cable shields if you're running shielded cable, so that's going to occur at the outlet in this particular uh, setup. So get yourself a three-prong outlet tester and make sure that it lights up as correct. If it's not correct, get it corrected before you attempt an installation of this nature. Uh, the next thing is, is that in your three-prong outlet, I strongly recommend uh, one of two things. One is a good surge protector with a high, with a good rating uh, as far as joules protection. And uh, so it, if any sort of uh, electrical disturbance occurs, it's going to uh, uh, protect your expensive network here. Uh, if your network needs to stay up, in other words, uh, let's say a surge strip is not going to be enough, there are rack mount options and also desk options for battery backups. And that'll provide you surge protection and some runtime. Uh, and the uh, amount of money you're going to pay for it is directly correlated to the runtime you're going to get. So the more money you spend, the more runtime you get. All right, so let's talk about some of the connectivity. So back here, we've got coaxial cable. This is RG6 quad shield going into a cable modem. And this cable modem, of course, is plugged into our surge protector. And so it all, sorts, it all starts here. This is where your internet connection in your home or business comes in. And we're just using coaxial uh, as an example. It could be fiber as well. And so from the cable modem, you need to plug your cable modem ethernet port, which is this port back here is labeled ethernet. And you're going to plug this. And you can either use a shielded or unshielded patch cord. And so from the cable modem, we're going to plug it into WAN on the router. And this is the router, this is a PoE switch, and this is a patch panel. So we're going to plug this into WAN 1. And this particular switch has a backup option called WAN 2 for load balancing and failover. But uh, in this particular case, we're not going to make use of that. We don't have a failover connection. So WAN 1 it is. And then, uh, again, for load balancing and failover, and also network segmentation, you've got LAN 1 and LAN 2. So the LAN 1 and LAN 2 connects into any one of the switch ports. Eight of them do PoE, and the other eight uh, do not do PoE. So considering that you don't need a PoE for this LAN to switch connection, uh, what you do is you can use an unshielded patch cord for this one if you want to, or shielded, it won't matter. And so you plug in from LAN 1, and then you plug into one of the non-PoE switch ports, any one of the eight. Reserve your PoE ports for PoE devices. You never know when you're going to install them. And in fact, we're going to count on the fact that you're going to actually do just that. OK, so the next step is you've got two different kinds of keystones mounted in this shielded patch panel. So this shielded patch panel um, allows you to do shielded cable and unshielded cable. Because these, uh, the, the router and the network switch are both, and both have an internal AC power supplies. So they're using three prong plugs into the surge protector, which means that you can create uh, a bond to ground through your shielded cable coming into the, uh, the back of the patch panel, into the shielded keystone. So the, the bond is made with the cable shield at the keystone. And then you must use a shielded patch cable for this part. So you can continue your bond. Because this metal on the end of the RJ45 connector will plug directly into the shielded keystone. And then 
let's say, for example, this is going to go to a PoE device, like an access point or a camera or something like that. So pick a PoE port, any of them is fine, and then plug it into one of those PoE ports. Now, for, for example, let's say you have an unshielded run. Because it's an unshielded run, uh, and, it's, and it's okay to be used in a shielded patch panel, it won't hurt it, um, you can plug a unshielded patch cord uh, from this into any one of these ports, depending on whether it's PoE or not. So you'll need to strategize uh, as to which ports you're going to make use of. We're doing what's known as a rack-to-jack strategy. And when it comes to um, basically networking done right, the last thing you want to do is attempt to wire up your whole house with patch cords. Patch cords are designed to patch things into each other. Uh, and at the outlet, for example, uh, in a remote room where there's another keystone jack, for example, let's say you've got a keystone that's mounted in a wall jack in an upstairs bedroom, okay, or in a case of a small business, a few offices over. So you would then plug a patch cord into that jack. You have your shielded cable coming into the back of it or unshielded, depending on what it is. And then you plug this end into a TV or computer or whatever. You don't want to use solid copper ethernet that you may have left on your spool to create patch cords. The, the least desirable way to terminate solid copper ethernet is with an RJ45 plug. There are times like on one end of a, of a connection run where like to a camera or to a a Wi-Fi access point for PoE where you may not have a choice but to use a, uh, an RJ45 plug. But generally you want to avoid that. There's a lot of things that can go wrong. Um, you can end up with uh, poor speed, uh, maybe even PoE issues because it, the, the, the plug's wired up wrong. So uh, generally speaking, uh, just buy your patch cords and then install your permanent cable into the patch panel and then into the jacks that are remote. So that's called a rack to jack strategy. Um, if you find yourself in a situation where you really do want to, or really do need to use a uh, patch cord from solid copper, uh, that's okay if you're using field termination plugs at both ends. So our field termination plugs essentially uh, terminate just like our toolless keystones. And they have what's known as an IDC termination or insulation displacement contact. And that provides you with a easy to terminate, much more reliable solid connection at the end of a patch cord if you're gonna create a patch cord using solid copper. Just avoid RJ45s. So that pretty well covers some of the more advanced topics. And as you can see, we've got some cables uh, that, have, that are coming into the wall back here. And they're ready to be dressed into the patch panel and terminated. And the nice thing about using a shielded patch panel here is that you can do either shielded or unshielded runs equally well and have a bond of ground for any shielded runs that uh, you may uh, install. So that takes care of this end. What about the remote end? Well, how does that look? And how do those keystones look mounted into a wall? Let's go take a look. Okay, so now we're in a remote office, so we'll just use this as our small business example, but it could be a home too. And so we've got two keystone jacks here, and they are mounted in a uh, wall plate. And as you can see, they are labeled as to which cable run is what. Now, these uh, cable runs are also labeled back at the patch panel and switch area, because you really do want to know which cable goes to what port in your switches. So make sure you're labeling your cable runs on the cable, on the outlet, and on the patch panel at both ends, so you know what is what. Um, and to make a connection into here, again, patch cables for, for patching, uh, you will plug in a patch cord into a keystone jack, and then you can plug it into a computer, for example. And that's how that works. This run from this outlet back to the switch is what's known as a permanent link. That's a technical industry term for, it's a solid copper link that you don't mess with. It's already installed, it's already been tested. All you do with permanent links is you patch into them. They're, they are permanent installations. So structured cabling is uh, uh, the term that gets applied to that quite often. Uh, so if you wanna see a way bigger example, uh, more medium business of a telecommunications room with it really advanced bonding and grounding, we're about to show you. 
Okay, so this is an example of a telecommunications room, or TR, um, inside of a medium-sized business. This is, in fact, the equipment that is running our warehouse here at Kansas City, uh, Missouri. The same ubiquity equipment that we're using in the other uh, installation I showed you is, in fact, being used here. It's, it's slightly bigger, more modern equipment than the other stuff I showed you. Um, what we have is a rack bus bar, we've got a primary bus bar, and all of the uh, ladder rack and conduit up there has all been bonded to ground. And so that's the difference between like a larger commercial setup with a telecommunications room and a residential setup. Now, some of the similarities are, uh, you might have noticed the backer board we had for that little rack mount, wall mount device that we were using before. Well three quarters inch plywood. But in this case, it has to be fire rated, which it is. And it's also been painted with fire retardant paint, two coats. So that's my coat. And we're using uh, bus bars that are mounted at least two inches off of the wall. And we're using six AWG uh, bonding conductors stranded to these double lug, double lug connectors that are no fun to, to, to crimp on, let me tell you right now. These are not small connectors and that's not thin wire. So those are no fun. So that is essentially what a uh, telecommunications room in a medium-sized business may look like. But every installation is different, you know, and every chef is different too. Every, every IT person or, or installer is going to do something a little bit different. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and got a chance to see a little extra special thing here. Uh, subscribe to our channel, uh, ring the notification bell. Uh, please visit our Cable Academy at TrueCable.com. Leave a comment below. We love to respond to comments. And with that, I'm going to say you have a great day. Happy networking.